consultation and searchable interest. The second chair is part of the third chair, so you might as well hear it anyway. Uh, um, you can, of course, do joint honours or single honours language and linguistics. Uh, all the courses which are offered are available to you. None of them are core courses, right? which means that there isn't one you absolutely have to do, but you have to fill up your, your, your syllabus according to um, these courses and a couple of other ones which I won't go into in great depth that they are around. Uh, this uh, half session one, so that's from September on at level three, junior honours, uh, there will be two courses in offer. One of them is language variation and change, which this year is actually running in the second half session, but the next year will be in the first half session. Why? Because I'll be on leave the second half session. Thank you. <laughs> uh, language variation and change is a sociolinguistic and historical linguistics course. It looks at the way that languages vary and change across space across society and across time and there. We don't just look at English, we look at a range of different languages as they become helpful to do so. So that at the moment in the class we're actually looking at whether we can actually talk about language families or not, because it's actually a lot more complex than anybody ever told you at other, in other courses. This course has no final examination. Those of you who are on level 3 will go, ah, bad, uh, busted because they're doing <laughs> but uh, we've changed that. Uh, for That's the very good reason, that, but there's nothing wrong with examinations whatsoever. I don't think they're actually very good at getting you to think. They're very good at teaching you how to use your memories, which isn't a bad thing of itself. But uh, it's there. So basically, what happens in that course is you have one essay and one a bit more like a project paper. You have one exercise and one group presentation, and that's how we lay out. So you would be finished before Christmas, except the, uh, the second essay doesn't need to be in until the end of the exams next year, but everything will be done before Christmas. This course analysis, also 30 credits, um, is, as the name suggests, about the analysis of discourse right? <laughs> <laughs> in various ways. It's um, primarily concerned with the way that we appreciate a text, both as a as a piece in itself, and also ideologically. Why is somebody writing like that, for instance, is one of the central things. Um, you can be a linguist without doing discourse analysis, but it actually comes in quite handy at times if you're particularly interested in the analysis of text, perhaps in literature, or whatever. It's 30 credits. All the courses are 30 credits. Uh, second half session. Uh, we have another one without an exam, uh, which is Will's phonetics course here, which he will, he will now impress you by his knowledge of. Well, um, several people here did the phonetics course this year, so you know it's about um, the sounds of language and um, how we can analyse them. Some of the second years are currently doing the sounds of English course, and in the final or second to final lecture of your course, we'll have a little kind of look forward to the kind of work that you do in the honours phonetics course. Um, so it's phonetics. We it's it's um, uh, it again. It's not entirely based on English because phonetics is phonetics and across linguistically. So you might be looking at speech sounds that aren't part of English, but um, it's it's a sort of quite a wide mm. wide range of things. Yeah. Also looking at not just that we reproduce things. I think one of the breakthroughs of the phonetics when coming into honours is that you're also interested in the way we perceive sound. Mm. Uh, and produce it so there's a touch of physics in it as well. First and second language acquisition um, covers a wide range of things. Again, there's people here as there are you know, in level three who have done this course. Although it'll be rather different next year because our new uh, language acquisition specialist, um, uh, Agnieszka Skripek, um, is going to be giving it. Sorry, I may have got that wrong. Uh, but it's. Uh, um, so. It's essentially about how do children learn, how do adults learn, how do we learn foreign languages, how do we learn second languages, what are the theories behind this? Uh, can we understand better by looking uh, theoretically at our understanding of acquisition? 
uh, what experiments can actually be done to face this? Now, uh, Agnieszka is actually, by training, a, so, a, a psycholinguist. So there'll be a, a lot of the discussion of the way we perceive learning. Yeah, just carry on courses. Um, for the last ever time, we're going to be doing six week and six week courses at level four, right? all 15 credits. The reason why that's happening is in the year after, um, we're all going to 11 week courses and we can't do six and six. Um, that's just the way it is. First quarter, uh, Will and I teach the whole of the first half session, in fact. This is not intentional, that's just the way it's turned out. <laughs> Uh, but um, I do a course in the first half session, so this is a 15 credit course, uh, one essay at the end. Uh, I do a course on language power, people, nation, which is about language policy, it's about language planning, language death, and actually language rebirth, as happened with Hebrew about 100 years ago. Um, we'll also be looking at the, na the way that nations construct themselves linguistically. Uh, you know, you go from a situation in the 18th century where most countries were multilingual to a situation now where most countries, at least in Europe, are basically monolingual. Uh, and this is, you know, this has some tremendous effects on the way that we learn language, but also the way we perceive language as well. Um, the way I run courses is that uh, I have two hours where I do most of the talking, but they're not lectures. You can jump in, and I'm very, very happy. And there's one hour every week which is spent in my office. I take the, the central um, uh, table out uh, and we sit around and we talk, talk to each other. And for most people anyway, it's superb. You know, it's, it's very casual, we all talk about things, we work out how, what we're doing in essays, various things, you know, you're given topics every week like that. And that's the way that I'll continue at least for this year. The other one is uh, research methods, which actually has a longer title, but I couldn't be honest with you, remember it this morning. Um, <laughs> it's just research methods in language and linguistics. Well, there, you, there you have it. Yeah. So it's not research methods in, um, in organic chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, well, what more, to, well, um, over the course of the other, the other courses that you've been taking, uh, or you will take as part of your degree, um, you'll come across various bits of research that people have done. So these are the, uh, the types of um, material that's, that's covered in your textbooks and so on. Um, uh, and sometimes you're not actually quite given the full amount of detail on how, you know, the practicality of how that research was actually carried out and, and what was involved and how would you go about structuring and carrying out a piece of research of your own. So this course, uh, this research methods course, will cover um, approaches to a range of types of research. So it can be, how do you do a well-organised, well-structured review of existing literature? So there might be a whole library full of uh, material that you, can, that you need to work your way through and process and select relevant bits from. It could be that you're, the research question that you're interested in calls for... Um, carrying out some practical research. So in my area, it's all to do with making recordings of people speaking. It may be to do with giving people a questionnaire and getting them to assess um, how grammatical they think different sentences are, or so on. Um, so there are various considerations for how you would do uh, that type of research. Um, some of my current dissertation students are asking me about how they can do any sort of statistical analysis on some measurements that they've taken. So we'll have a brief look at um, using statistics to support any conclusions that you might draw from um, quantitative measurements sort of data as well. And the idea of all this is that if you are later in the year going to be working on your dissertation, some of the material that we cover in the research methods course will stop you from having to kind of reinvent the wheel and, and you know start from scratch because you will be covering examples of people who've done similar types of research um, to the question that you're investigating. Um, however, it's not a prerequisite for doing no, the dissertation. No. So you don't, you know, it's not that you are required to do this course. But it might but come in handy. It's the kind of thing that could be useful and, and, and could be useful as, as all of these sort of transferable skills and um, you know, improving your graduate attributes and so on, because it may well be that these sort of 
more widely applicable um, research skills are quite useful, you know, beyond linguistics as well. I have to be said, and I should have said this, uh, and Will, of course, brings up there, is that uh, level four courses are designed both for themselves and also to encourage you to think about your dissertation and to learn new methodologies, whether that be overtly or covertly through just seeing what other people do, uh, you get a strong sense of that. So all of them are designed as research-driven courses, are things that interest us, but are also things that we think will probably help you. Uh, both, try, as you were saying, in a transferable way, like um, uh, knowing about something's a good thing to know about, and knowing how to learn that is a good thing. But also from the point of view of uh, the dissertation. So that's slot A, so that's the first six weeks of the first uh, half session. Uh, the second uh, half, as it were, uh, I do a course called Language Contact and Change in Language, which is essentially about questions like, um, why is it that Australians sound similar to, but not the same as New Zealanders, when the two countries were founded at about the same time? Uh, why is it that Falkland Islanders don't sound more like South Africans? Why is it that New, uh, Australians sound quite Cockney? but they don't drop their H's. So, what are the linguistic reasons for that? What about dialect contact? Also, language contact as well. Um, why is it that um, all pigeons and creoles appear to develop in similar ways? Not necessarily linguistically, but sociolinguistically. What's happening there? What's a coiny? You know, these uh, usages, like for instance, when people move from, uh, from mainly from southeastern England, but also from the, the southern Midlands, of England into what became Milton Keynes. What actually happened when, uh, when people got together who sounded different, when their children started? The answer is that within one generation, people sound Milton Keynes. It's mainly Cockney, or not Cockney's own word, but London of various forms, but it also includes features which you wouldn't really think of as being from the home counties and also even from as far away as Birmingham. So it's basically uh, that it also covers the contact uh, between English, Norse, French, and the Celtic languages at the end of the, or during the Anglo-Saxon period, and how that developed linguistically. So it's not just about learning about concepts; it's also about getting our hands dirty with examples of language contact. And again, that would be taught in seminars and also in sort of information sessions. Well, social phonetics. Well, social phonetics is a real kind of uh, buzz word at the moment. It's a, a, a quite a recently developing area of linguistics. Uh, and it's, as the, the label sort of suggests, a, a sort of combination of more general social linguistic um, questions. So we're interested in how language varies and changes in society, but making use of the types of phonetic, um, quite precise phonetic um, analysis that we, we introduce in the level three phonetics course, so if you uh, um, are interested in um, doing phonetics, but you're also interested in language variation and change, then social phonetics is a way of combining those two um, together. And although um, it's 15 credits um, a short course, uh, there's still scope for carrying out, um, admittedly, quite a small piece of research, but a piece of independent um, research, a kind of little case study um, using socio-phonetic techniques. So, um, yeah, that should appeal to some people. Definitely. Hypothetically, mm -hmm. are you allowed to...? Yes. <laughs> uh, I can see what the question is, can you do two at the same time? Can you, yeah, say that... If I you're not joint on say, yeah. You can say, I don't want to do slot B, and I'll do the whole of slot A. Yeah, or vice versa. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not officially allowed, but we've done it before. So. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, I prefer to convince things that we can do. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's a bit more than that now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's actually somebody this year who did no, uh, she's doing joint tunnels English linguistics, and she did no club uh, courses at all in the first half session. She did all of it, you know, dissertation and uh, that in the second half session. That was not something I would have advised her to do, but that was some wish. Uh, yeah. So, yes. Could it go well? What's too well to tell, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, that, this is the thing, it's a bit of brinksmanship. Uh, okay, second half session, we don't have six week courses. Um, 
there are only, uh, there's only one course on offer, uh, that's uh, Language in the Professions. Uh, language in the Professions uh, carries on with a number of ideas in a number of the Level 3 courses uh, to look at the way that language is used in the law, in engineering, in various other ways, you know, how language interrelates with that. Um, this year, anyway, there was a trip to the court to see how language was used uh, there. Uh, which um, I think is, uh, you know, it's pretty cool unless you're the ice cream goal. Yes, uh, yeah. Um, there's also the dissertation in language and linguistics, uh, which is a 30 credit course. It's actually officially a 12 credit course. There are no classes, but you, you're expected to remain in touch with your dissertation supervisor. Uh, and you can, although in theory, I think we're only supposed to see you three times. And, uh, and no, well, that's not the right way to put it. We only have to see you three times. <laughs> um, it tends to be either a case of me trying to find out what has happened to people at the end of April, uh, which, is, which will happen again this year, uh, or people are seeing you every couple of weeks or even every week, and I'm happy with the latter, it's no problem. Um, the dissertation, the person who supervises you can only look at about a thousand words of it. This is because he or she is also the first marker. So there's a conflict of interest there, but you can show people that. Um, I know I mentioned recently that I was quite interested in having someone like yourself as a dissertation mm -hmm. supervisor. How would that be effective by the fact that you're taking the lead in the second? It would be fine. Would you say fine. We're too big a unit to be able to say, oh, well, I won't do any supervising of dissertations. I mean, does that mean you're still here in the second half? Yeah, I'll be right. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. No, I'm not decided to go off to some <laughs> <laughs> It has to be a fine thing, you know, but no, no, no. <laughs> Well, no, I'm afraid I'm more Shetland than Orkney, which uh, yeah. is not the time of year you want to go up there. So it's, uh, uh, then again, a guy I met once, lovely fellow, uh, Terry Crowley, he died of malaria. His, his field was, uh, was the languages of Vanuatu in the South Pacific, which sounds fantastic. B dies of, uh, dies of malaria or pneumonia or something like that. And what's that will happen to me is I get a bit cold. <laughs> it's a bit damp and dark. But that's it. So, the dissertation, uh, we'll be getting to that in a, a minute, but dissertation is your responsibility. Right? Um, I have been known to chase people up, but most people are doing fine, they just don't need to talk to me, and that's fine. But there's always a one or two, like the one, I think it was three years ago now, who turned up at my office at the end of April to say, am I supposed to do a dissertation? <laughs> and this is weird because she filled out a form, she ticked boxes, things like that. And it's, I first I remember the conversation being, should we give her anything or just tell her she has to have it in a week? And then, then charity prevailed and she was given an extra two weeks. But put it this way, it wasn't exactly Dr. Johnson. <laughs> but she passed and that's fine. But uh, that always struck me as being the ultimate what did you think was happening? Did you not notice you went down from two courses to one course? Mm -hmm. that, that's, oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. So it's your responsibility. Uh, I'm about to start talking about that because although it's a 12 week course in half session two next year, there may be some other issues which you'd want to start talking about just now. Uh, okay, here, here is the most important point uh, in choosing courses, linguistics courses. Um, if you're a joint honours student, it's normal to take 30 credits in each half session. Uh, you may take up to 60 with my permission, however. I will be willing to do that uh, for that, but uh, uh, it's always with a degree of um, health warning. About it. But what you're talking about, Mark, is slightly different. That's going 30-30, it's going but just doing 30-30. Um, in level 4, it's normal to take 60 or 120 credits through level 4 courses. You may, with my permission, however, take 30 credits in level 3 courses. You have to take 90 credits in level 4 to get a degree. But a lot of people choose, because for whatever reason they couldn't do one of the junior honours courses, or they choose to do it then, and that's absolutely fine. No problem at all. Curriculum reform, crazy name, etc. Um, Single honours students must take 30 credits of courses from outside the uh, This is not something we want, or indeed students want. I think it's a great thing that people are encouraged to do that. I think it's a bad thing that people are that it's enforced. But it's not up to me. I imagine that in about two years' time we'll just gradually be forgotten about it. And we'll just stop doing it. 
because uh, for the first time we got people nearly failing because of it or something like that. Um, we strongly advise that you take 30 credits of courses. That could be two 15s or one 30. David? Would those, would they have to be third year courses? If you're doing it in third year, yes, normally. If you want to do it, in, uh, if you want to do it in your fourth year, you could do level four courses as long as you qualify for them. But they can't be anything other than honours uh, courses, or they don't count. There's, the, there's various issues about that because it was it was tried out as an idea that people could do level one and level two courses, but it turns out they can't. So just so I understand you correctly, uh -huh. uh, in the third year, could you take a second year third year credit? No. It's got to be a third year. It's got, third, it's got to be an honours course in whatever subject you like, as long as you're qualified to do it. All right. Um, so we, we can't insist that you do it in your junior honours year, but having seen the trauma that some people have gone through this year, uh, who have been the first year to do it, I think it's a good idea to, um, to do so because you, you want your, uh, your level four as well would be able to tell you, level four is worth more to your degree than level three is. In language and linguistics, is that forty percent uh, of your total mark is your level three courses. Okay. Sixty percent is your level four courses. So um, it's to encourage people to do things to do well in fourth year, which a lot of people do, and they never got uh, uh, got credit for it. It also tries to discourage the thing which often happened, which when we when it was fifty fifty, which was that people saw that they were getting a two one. Uh, at the end of, of third year, because they had 100% to one and didn't bother trying uh, very much towards anything else, because they couldn't get any other degree apart from going down. So they try to encourage you to do that, but because curriculum reform courses can be a bit of a mixed bag, um, you might want to do that in your level three. We strongly advise it. Now, you can take any class you like for which you have the prerequisites. Um, this is again only single honours students, because joint honours students don't need to worry about this. Um, you may take, although it's got the same codes, you may take English courses if you're qualified. As part of it. We also strongly recommend if you've carried a language on for two years or something like that, you could do, say, a French course or a couple of French courses or whatever. We strongly recommend that would be good. Or you could do things which are cognate subjects like sociology, anthropology, and so on. But there's actually an anthropological linguist who unfortunately was on leave this year, but will be back, I think, next year. Uh, and he might be somebody that you're going to talk to about doing his courses. So I try my best. I'm your advisor of studies. I try my best to help out with this, but sometimes I'm in, it's the blind leading the blind. So have a good think about it now. Don't just turn up at the meeting and go, oh, yeah, I forgot about that something like that because I can't give you brilliant advice anyway. Um, as I say, we strongly recommend that you take something which helps out in language and linguistics, but it's really up to me. Okay, dissertation, let's look at something more fun. Uh, right, some of you are at the end of third year, uh, so you should probably already... Um, this is not, of course, something that's signed in blood or something about this. Uh, this can be changed over quite a number of times, but it's, think about, for a start, what interests you. You would be surprised how many people do courses that are, or do dissertations and things they're not particularly interested in. They thought it'd be easy or something like that. Let me tell you that if you're interested in something, it's always easier than if you're not interested in something, no matter how complex the subject. Uh, are you aware of a place in the scholarly literature which hasn't been covered as well as it might? You think, hold on a second, nobody's ever looked at that. Nobody's ever compared that and that. You set yourself tasks, if you like, um, mind experiments to see, how would that pan out? What do I think will happen if I do that? As well as saying, uh, you know, many of us students do field work of one form or another, we actively encourage this. Particularly if you're doing field work, you really have to have that worked out fairly soon though. Because field work always takes four times longer than you think it does. From bitter personal experience. All those things you've got, I can do this in a couple of days, two weeks later. You know, you're still doing it. Because of all that time you hang about in libraries or at bus stops. Or God knows what. But it can be great when it works. Um, 
It's a good idea from about now on to identify a supervisor. Um, this has advantages because if you come and say, I really want to do X, Y, and Z, and they say, well, actually, that's been done very well by Q. You're going to say, oh, well, I'll do something slightly different then. Or they can tell you things which are quite important things. Like a lot of people come along and say things like, I'd like to do this. And you go, that's really interesting, but I think that would probably be a couple of books. <laughs> right? Or alternatively, somebody says something, you say, that's really interesting as well. And it is really interesting, but it's like two paragraphs. That's all you could ever write on that subject was two or three paragraphs. So th we're there to tell you, yeah, that's realistic, that's not realistic. But it is your shout in the end up about what you do. Nobody um, expects you to have a fully worked out topic on the go now. A uh, woman my wife used to know, when she started here as a mature student, uh, within two weeks she'd worked out what she was doing her dissertation four times about, uh, four years about, and she did it brilliantly. But it is slightly creepy. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, you know, I want people to think about really hard about what they're doing. I mean, I'm sure Lorna actually did think really hard, it's just she was very set on things like scholars often are. Um, what you really need to do now, as, or you know, when, tie, when things begin to loosen up a bit in a few weeks' time, is you've got to think in terms of a field and then read through it. What Will was talking about there. You know, so uh, the library's pretty good, so you can get a fair idea of that in using other ways to say, God, there's a lot out there, but there isn't anybody that's actually done this. There'll be another dissertation meeting in October. Uh, which uh, where uh, you will talk in more nitty gritty about what you actually need to do and how you do it. But what you need to be thinking about now, it doesn't matter, but even if you're not doing a linguistics dissertation, if you're doing another dissertation, the same thing applies normally, is think through what interests you, how you do it, what it will turn out as you think, uh, and what you will need to do it. If you've got a very demanding job, for instance, you know, where you have to be uh, here uh, you know, six out of seven nights a week, or something. There's no point in trying to, trying to do um, field work in the south of France, right? unless you're doing it when you're on holiday. Um, it's, just, it's just the way it is, you have to think this through. Those of you who are in second year now, um, you should think about this as well. I mean, you don't have to do it absolutely and definitely now, but you have to do it fairly soon. I mean, time cracks on and then suddenly um, you're gone. I met a woman in, in uh, Morrison's, actually, in Cornell, who is in Morrison's, uh, a few weeks back, he went, oh, hello, hello. And I vaguely, you know, I was just remember the face, and I said, oh, you've been left at the University of Wales. She said, yeah, 15 years. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? And uh, uh, there she goes, you know, she had, like, all the uh, children who were about 10 or 11, older than my child, and so on. But, you know, time just whacks by when you're doing this sort of stuff. So think ahead, wise up, get to know subjects, talk to people about the topics. Many of us uh, have got pet topics we know would be quite good for an undergraduate dissertation. We'll never do them ourselves, but you know, we just don't have time. Uh, but uh, you know, they'd be worth doing. Yeah, so we could point you in the right direction. Okay. Is the, is linguistics 8,000 or 10,000? It's about 8,000. 8, it's the same as English. The reason for that is we think that uh, it's actually more difficult to write 8,000 words than 10,000 words. You know, it's not as big as that. Nothing quite so, de quite so depressing. Fair enough. Uh, uh, nothing quite so depressing is I, I had an email from one of my students, one of my supervisees a couple of days ago, who said, I've got 1,500, so I'm getting there. So this person just counted his way through it. Yeah, the thing is, oh God, that's going to be wonderful, isn't it? Uh, actually, the reason it's eight is because that's very similar to the normal length of, a, of an article in a scholarly journal. So, you know, it's to get used to it. Because now and then, you know, uh, last year we had somebody who went on to publish their dissertation in the, the um, a very prestigious one actually, it was the, um, the Journal of Yorkshire Dialectology or something, or the Yorkshire Dialect Society publication. On that because she, she was writing about Wilfred Pickles, the famous uh, TV and radio presenter. Um, we all, uh, a few years back, we, you know, we had somebody in Scottish language doing things. So if you're good and it's good, you know, you will probably be pointed in the direction of somewhere where it could get published because the best stuff is very good indeed. 
Okay, I've, I'm going to have to head off in a few minutes because I've got to pick up my daughter before six, or they start fining you £10 every five minutes. <laughs> uh, which is, I suppose, fair enough, but it's like, I'll get there in time. Uh, <laughs> Will can answer as well. He's, he's, yeah. uh, you know, he's been known to do it, yeah. Uh, so, any questions? Um, if we're, if, like, you're saying you want to aim for a first, like, uh -huh. you say it's like 60 40 for third and fourth year, but, like, do you know how many? Well, we do because yeah. the, the regulations are there. You have to have 50% of your mark at first class level. Uh, and if you remember, like, there's no lower mark than a 2 2. Yeah, you can get a third to get a first. Although, actually, that happened a few years ago because of something very unfortunate and the person was given a first. Yeah, because it's ridiculous, uh, really, to do that. But if you look at the regulations, that explains it to you. Uh, but basically, if you're coasting between 2 1 and first now, you could push that into a first, no problem. That's the, that's the point of doing it that way. Alternatively, you could push it <laughs> well, but that's, that's life, is it? You know? yeah. All right. uh, how is it with uh, students going away for a term next year? You mean for Erasmus purposes? Yes. Yeah. Um, we do have Erasmus relationships. It is no problem whatsoever. We actively encourage you, unless you're going to a, lang a country where uh, it either has a big English linguistics part of their English department, which would normally be taught in English, or um, you happen to be a very good linguist, that if you're going to do that, you're probably better off doing all of your linguistics in one half session. Right? If you can uh, do that. That's only a suggestion, but if you're interested in that, you go and talk to Dr. Baker in the English department, you've said you're right. I've already said my courses were way too much school. Okay. I think, I don't know. Yeah. 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 I did Erasmus last year, and I think I'm the only one who yeah, but you were doing it in your year abroad, weren't you? Yeah, but I think I'm the only one for my year who did Erasmus and then came back to. No, but yeah, what else is missing a term? Uh, what else um, did you take? Like, I'm, I'm, I found it quite like when you get there, there is some flexibility. If you find a course that's better and you can justify it, that that will not be the case. And most universities yeah. that I know that did, did a lot of good linguistic. I'm um, complete. No, I think you're probably right. Where, where did you go? I went to Germany. But, right. um, I mean, they did contrast their English and, uh, English and German linguistics, but there's a lot of stuff out there. That, yeah. All right. But you're a fair German, and we're a good bit German. So that was so in English, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, you were going to ask me something. Uh, the 30 week one, I should have said that, sorry, the, the six week ones don't because it just, well, we can't have exams in the middle of a year or the middle of a term anyway, so they'd have to be at the end, which is really rather unfair. <laughs> uh, but the, but the, the language and the professions know it has two essays and a couple of other things there. But no, I don't see the point, you know, at level four and doing exams unless you absolutely have to, but that's just my view. So, for example, if for one of the 15 credit courses, what would be the um, kind of assessment for that? No, normally, uh, uh, well, for my ones, it's an essay and some you know, seminar assessment. Okay. And there's big essays and all that? Longer than you're used to. Uh, longer than you're used to. But, uh, Okay. 2,500, 2,000? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And maybe it'd be more of reports for you, but it's basically the same. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. yeah. Um, I know it's a bit of a way off from me being in second at the moment, but um, you said because uh, the structure's changing to 11 weeks instead of 12. Yeah. Obviously, the fourth year stuff isn't now yeah, relevant exactly. to any of the people in second year at the moment. No. So, have you got a sort of an idea of what? Because obviously, you've got offering four courses, so that means half <coughs> all the choice. Well, no, it's, it's, going to be, um, it's going to be different. Um, the way we've planned it at the moment is that we're going to have a couple of 30 credit courses in the first half session, but we might also have a couple of 15 credit courses which we've run for 11 weeks <coughs> as well. We haven't got around to that yet, I mean, we're, uh, because we're still, it depends on who's here, who's doing what and all that. But you certainly won't have any less choice than you right. have now, okay. and quite possibly a bit more. Oh, <laughs> um, for the mathematics course, um, for those of us who had to suffer the curriculum and form thing right. and weren't allowed to do, well, chose not to do the phonetics course in third year, will that be a disadvantage to those students who didn't do phonetics? Well, now I think I actually have had a, the uh, third year as a prerequisite <coughs> course. Um, I don't think you could actually demand it. Well, okay, I mean, it, it depends. It would be it would be more work because some people have had you know eleven or twelve weeks of of, of kind of 
thinking about phonetics and acoustic phonetics and so on. Um, so there'll be a lot more reading and associated sort of catching up to do. So it's not it's it's not impossible, no. um, and it, especially if it ties into things that you're interested in, yeah. then you would have the kind of motivation to do that. So. What I would suggest then is anybody who's in that situation should probably get in touch with Will yeah. before the break and ask for some recommendations. Oh yeah, I mean there are certainly things that you can, you, you know, I hope it's not too um, dismissive of the stuff that we did in Phonetics this year, but it's not, it, it's, it's perhaps new and different from the things you've done in other courses, but it's not impossible, you know, it's not kind of like nuclear physics or something, it's it's um, it's stuff that you can probably catch up with, so yes. Yeah, so I mean, I think that it's a matter of being forward, forewarned. If you also let us know, we could also probably open up to the phonetics lectures, you know, which would have been recorded, though. Well. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. No. But the, the handouts and things, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, on the same subject of um, us catching up, can we, will the, can we get ahead? Will the Probably. It's all we, all we always go, oh yeah, yeah, no problem, and then of course the summer comes and you're off doing your own work. I think I'm going um, to come back to Aberdeen this year. Yeah. What I'm certainly for my courses, I will hand, hand down things for what are the primary needs, or, or, or potentially give you the, uh, the course guide from last year, okay. so, which wouldn't necessarily be exactly the same, but it would be similar. If you take uh, 30 points from a third uh, year course in your fourth year, is there any downside to that? Because it's not going to affect the, uh, the working degree at all or anything? No, not at all. It's completely 